Hey Jonathan here at Colfax Math. It's a practical math channel. Today I'm going over a math portion of the CBEST exam. I'll put a link to this in the description below. I'd recommend you print that out, work your way through it, watch video, pause, and kind of work your way through the test. See how I do it and do the problems yourself. I'm only actually going to go over problems 31 through 40 in this video and I've gone over a lot of the other problems in two previous videos. So I'll put links to, to those two videos in here. Um, but in this video, I'm going to go over some tricks and tips on how to solve these problems um, and problems 31 through 40. So let me put the camera over my shoulder and we'll get started. Okay, getting started on the California Basic Educational Skills Test to teach in California and I think Oregon as well. This is a math portion of it. I'm actually gonna jump right to problem number 31 and get started here. So a couple strategies is to mark up the test as much as you can, circling key ideas, highlighting um, important points, and discarding answers that don't make any sense. So as I read through problem 31, Antonio buys four notebooks at 350, so four at 350. I kind of glance down and I see it here. The next day he returns to the store and exchanges the notebooks for three notebooks at $1.75. So three notebooks at $1.75, that's right here. He uses the following expression to calculate the amount of money he should receive back from the exchange. So the important thing here is it's the amount of money he receives back. So really make a note of that. And then it says, which of the following expressions could Antonio have also used? So we actually have the correct answer and we're looking for an alternate correct answer. So here's the right answer. And we wanna see another answer that's gonna have the same equivalence of that right there. So probably the best way to go through a problem like this is to actually discard answers that are not equivalent. It's probably easier to find things that are not equivalent to this than try and figure out which one is equivalent. So this is four times 350 minus three times 175. Well, that, that's clearly not the same as 350 minus 175 because here I'm doing four times it, so that doesn't make sense. We go down to B, the difference times three plus 350. That one does kind of make sense, but um, to figure it out completely, it's gonna take a little more time. Let me go through the other ones and then go back to that one. I'm not too sure about it, so I'm gonna put it on hold. Four times 350 minus 175. That doesn't make any sense because he returned, or he bought three at $1.75, so that one doesn't make any sense. 12 times the difference. That doesn't make any sense at all because he bought four, brought them back, and then bought three more. So it's gonna be the difference between four and three, not four times three. And then again, if that, if that one's wrong, that one has to be wrong as well, because they're the same thing. Four times three is 12. So none of those make sense except for B. And then as we look at B, let's go through it. The difference times three, well, that would make sense because he bought three and he brought back four at that price. So he brought back, he's gonna receive three times the difference and there's a fourth one right there. So the correct answer is B. Okay, on the 32 here, Rudy needs to calculate 14% of 50. Uh, how does he, he does it in the following way. So this problem's the exact same thing. Here's the answer to it, and now you're looking to an equivalency of that. So one thing about percents, 14%, the way I remember going from percent to decimal or fraction, as a percent like that, it's like an arrow shooting it over two places. That's how I remember it. So 14% is equal to 0.14, and 0.14 is also equal to 14,100. So you kind of have that information here, 14% to a fraction. So let's see which one of these is the equivalent of that one. Um, 14's in the numerator, 50 in the numerator, 100 in the denominator. So 14 over 50, that's what that is. That doesn't make any sense. 50 divided by 14, that doesn't make any sense. 14 over 50 times 100, 
That doesn't make any sense because that'll be 1400 over 50. 14 divided by 50, well, they're both in the numerator there. Dividing means to put in the denominator. That doesn't, that doesn't work either. 50 times 0.14, we know that right there is the equivalent of 0.14, so that's the correct answer. So 32 is E. Okay, turn to the page 33. Use the table below to answer the questions. The table shows Sabra's grades for a class, her overall average. The test average counts twice as much as a quiz. So I'm going to call a quiz X. The test is 2X. And the final exam is twice as much as the test. So this is 2 times 2X or 4X. Find her overall average. Sabra uses the following expression. One of these, two of these, four of these divided by seven. So again, this is another equivalency problem. So you're just trying to find one of these expressions is the equivalent of that. So here I have one of these, two of those, four of those, but I'm only dividing six of them by seven, not all seven. So that doesn't make sense. This one right here, um, 83 plus 20% of 79, that doesn't make any sense because you're saying this is 100% and this is only 20%. These actually have higher weight, so that doesn't really work. 83 plus two of those, plus four of those, that actually is the same as that. But this is divided by seven and this is divided by 0.7. Those are different things, so that can't work. 83 plus two of those plus four of those divided by a seventh. Dividing by fractions is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So that's the same as multiplying by seven over one. But that's not the equivalent of that. So that one doesn't work. One of these, two of those, four of those times one seventh times one seventh is the same thing as dividing by seven. So the correct answer here is E. On these problems where they really give you an expression and they're asking you for the equivalent expression, um, the best way I think to do these is through a process of elimination. So, all right, turn in the page 34. Use the chart below to answer the question that follows. The chart above shows the relationship between X and Y. Given this relationship, what would the Y value be that's missing? So we're looking for this Y value here. So on the X side, I see plus 0.5, plus 0.5, plus 0.5, plus 0.5, plus 0.5. So on the Y side, let's see if I have a similar relationship, if it's a constant increase. So plus 1.5, plus 1.5, plus 1.5 would be 7.5 plus 1.5 would be nine, plus one and a half would be 10 and a half. So that is a relationship, and that would put that value at seven and a half. So 34 would be answer D. 35, the next one down here, the school is proposing a 5% increase in the number of days in the school year. Currently there are 180 days in the school year. How long would a school year be with the proposed increase. So we're gonna look at the total number. So a 5% increase of 180, I could do 5% um, as a decimal. So 5% is 0.05. Remember we go over one, over two to get 0 0.05. 0 0.05 times 180, um, well five times one will be five and the eight will be four. So that'll be a total of nine. So 0 0.05, times 180 is nine. The other way you could see it is 05 is gonna be a half value, but it's over one additional place. So half of 18 is nine. So the total number of days increase is nine. They ask you the total number of days in the new school year, 180 plus nine is 189. If some of those multiplication tricks didn't work, you're just doing this times this. So you could do 
it with long multiplication that way as well to get the same nine. So 35 is 189 days. Turn in the page to 36 here. Which of the following statements is correct? So really here, we're just looking for a true statement. Again, probably the best way to do this is through a process of elimination. This is a greater than, less than sign. How that sign works is a larger number is always on the open side to the smaller number. So five is greater than four. This is skinnier or smaller than this. And that's how I know where the larger one goes. So I'm just gonna just look at the first half of the expression, not the whole expression. So three and a third is not greater than three and two thirds, so that can't be it. Three and two thirds is greater than two and two thirds, so that one works for the first half. I'm only going through the first half. Three and a third is greater than that. Three and two thirds is greater than that. Or two thirds greater than one third. Three and a third greater than three and, oh no, now we're, these things are reversed. Three and one third is less than three and two thirds. That's true. So now I'm gonna to go to the second half of the equation, or I'm sorry, expression. Two and two thirds is greater than three. No, two is not greater than three, that can't work. Two is greater than three. Nope, that doesn't work. Three and a third is greater than two and two thirds, that does work. Three and two thirds is less than two, that clearly does not work. So all of those through process of elimination can be eliminated, leaving you with D, and you know that D works. Okay, down to number 37 here. This one's kind of similar. Find a, f use a statement below to answer the question. Which of the following values when entered into the box make this thing true? So I think what I'm gonna do first, since I see these are all even numbers, is reduce these fractions. So this is two six. Two will go into there once, into there three times. So two six reduces to one third. Six eighths, both even numbers. Three will go into here twice. No, I'm sorry. Two will go into here three times. Two will go in here four times. So I reduce six eighths to three fourths. So I'm looking for a number between one third and three quarters. Um, I think I'm gonna go through a process of elimination as well through here. Um, one quarter is not greater than a third. So I'm not even gonna check it on the other side. I just know that one quarter is less than a third. So that's all I'm gonna go. One third is not greater than a third, it's equal to a third. One half is greater than a third and it's also less than three quarters. So that one works. Three quarters is not less than three quarters, it's equal to it. Nine tenths is pretty close to one, so that one clearly is not it. So 37 is C. So at first I thought the problem when I just glanced at it was gonna be reducing fractions and putting everything in a twelfth, but really through a process of elimination, um, it's easier just to narrow it down to C. Um, if I had a value, an expression like this with a less than or equal to sign, then three quarters could have been less than or equal to three quarters because this includes equals. Okay, turn in the page to 38. Which of the following expressions is equivalent? So this again is the same equivalent thing. Probably the best way to do these process of elimination. Multiplication of fractions is you multiply across the top and the bottom. So this is the equivalent of B times H over two times two. Well, that's not the same as that. Here I'm multiplying by two, here I'm dividing by two, so that's not the same. Here, I'm introducing an addition sign. The way I add fractions is I add across the top and I keep the common denominator. So that's, that's not the same as multiplication. Here, I have B times H times a half, kind of similar to the other one. B times H times a half is the same as B times H divided by two which is the same, so that is the same. And this right here would be times H times two. Multiplication is commutative, so that would be the same as two B times H, which is not divided by it, so that doesn't make sense. So 38 is D. On the 39, kind of a place value problem here. Which of the following numbers is between this number and this number? So I'm counting digits, 
and I can see this is 2 million and this is 2 million. This is 329,000, 598,000. So I'm looking for a number between 329,000 and 598. So I'm only looking, because all of these are both 2 millions and all these have the 2 million in it. So above 329, well 249 is not above, so that doesn't work. 303 is not above, 327 is not above, 329 is the same as, so then I go to the next three digits. These are lower than these, so it can't be this one. 589 is above 329. I'm sorry, yeah, 589 is above 329, but 589 is below 598. So this is the answer, 39 is E. Process of illumination really works in a lot of these. And this one again, same kind of story. It's kind of a place value. Probably the best way to do it is process of elimination. Here I noticed two zeros. After the decimal point, here only one. So I have point zero, zero, 0051. Then I have point zero, 0038. But I could put as many zeros after it not to affect the value. So now I got four digits in each. So I'm really looking for ones with four digits that are between 51 and 380. So 42 is below 51. 260, 261 is below, between 51 and 380. That one works. Um, 490 is above that, but it's not below that. That does not work. 520 is above that, but certainly not below that. And then now the same number of digits here, but I could add those zeros without affecting the value. Now I got four digits after the decimal. 600 is not between 51 and 380. So 261 is the only one that works. And the correct answer for 40 is B. So I hope that helped. I hope that answered the questions on 31 through 40 in the CBEST math exam. Um, I'd like to hear your comments below how the exam practice is going. Uh, if you like these videos, please hit like. And if you like practical math, uh, think about subscribing. Thank you for watching.